I've said it before and I'll say it again. My clueless first friend is going to be the best slice of life of 2023. And I recommend everyone to check out this anime. It's nothing too dense. It's about two grade school kids who learn to be friendly towards one another. It covers topics about school bullying, what it means to be falling for someone in elementary school, the impact of having an absentee parent on a young girl. My Clueless First Friend is just a really great anime. It's one that I think is going to catch a lot of people by surprise and I can't wait to see what everyone's reaction is to this fantastic series. I was really into the opening shots of episode 1. It captures the vibe of the manga and elevates it. The opening song is fine, it's a cute song and it fits the audience of the show, but it really didn't do too much for me upon first listen. Maybe it'll grow on me, we'll see. Nishimura's nonchalance as people badmouth her is great. She embraces the label of Grim Reaper. You see her smile as she overhears the kids talking crap about her, but she doesn't give a damn. She feeds the fish and goes on with her day. And I think that sort of reaction, that's something that was kind of missing at most times with the manga. So it's good to see the studio understand how to fill in the gaps of this adaption by focusing on those little qualities of emotional tribulation and reaction that is able to bring out the most of a simple story like this. Clueless First Friend has a number of supporting characters that weave in and out of the story to help engineer along the plot. As such, I was kind of worried how the voice acting would be for these characters that aren't that significant. However, I'm happy to say that the voice acting is absolutely on point. Takata's excitement is strong, youthful, and ringing. It contrasts really well with the Grim Reaper's blasé projection. So even if you're the type to turn away when anime is playing in the background, you can tell who exactly is excited about what they're hearing or they feel a little bit troubled by what they're seeing. It's all very expressive. The anime even expands on our leading couple's first meeting. Takata comes off way more bold in the anime than he does in the manga. In the manga, he's pretty dense, and he is here too, but you can see some sensibility in the boy, and that adds some more intrigue to his character. Nakamura is also much more talkative here. I used to get like a Wednesday vibe from her before. Now there's more humanity towards the grade schooler. She's not as gloomy and gothy as she's portrayed in the manga, but again, for the vibrancy of the anime adaption, this change works and it works very well. The first episode gave me the vibe that the staff were channeling the way their own children speak and inserting that realism into the banter between characters. Studio Signpost is handling the adaption, and while this isn't the highest budgeted show this season, the colors are rich and vibrant, the shots are no frills, but exceptionally done. The director, Shigenori Kageyama, definitely knows what he's doing. His resume shows an assortment of production work, and I get a clinical, utility-based approach to every single scene in episode 1, and that's okay. I didn't want to get a Hideaki Anno type influence on this show. I wanted a director to come in and, as I've mentioned before, elevate all of the best qualities of the manga, and Taku Kawamura, the mangaka of My Clueless First Friend, has cooked up a series that lends itself very well to that sort of workflow. Episode 1 flowed naturally. It didn't feel sequenced like I was expecting. The manga has short chapters, so seeing them take that format and make it into a full school day was a nice touch. Give My Clueless First Friend a shot. This is such a wonderful series. And I have a feeling that it's going to catch on big time. Thanks for watching the video. Please, in the comment section, leave any recommendations of anime that you're watching this season. Perhaps I'll check them out.